Hey fellas, Jazz here. So, I'm getting off coding today to have a nice little seethe and mauled because this week has been a rough one. Oh boy, I have done a lot of work behind the scenes making sure that the loadout slate and all of the new stuff is going as planned. The thing is, I'm mostly doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like as in with the code. It's been mostly just UI code, save stuff, and a lot of refactoring, namely because I'm transitioning over to a new version of the preset and item class with a lot more information and a lot more detail, which is why you might see some serialization errors down here. Anyways, I'm going to jump in. Bear in mind, this will be very, very broken. And I'm just going to load it up in play maximized mode. Just going to wait for it to load. And there we go, we've already got our first error. Anyways, let's jump into loadout, and anyone who's played Burb out for an extended period of time, or even just jumped into the screen, should be familiar with this, but might not necessarily see some of the changes that I've got here. I'm going to just quickly go over and let's show, let's, for the first thing, actually, I'm going to show off, as you can see, temporary UI, so let's say... Uh -huh. New load out. This toggle is going to be for randomization later on, uh, so it can generate a random thing. That's going to be much later, and as you can see, this is using like very default Unity UI. It's it's not very burb out looking at all. So if I hit go, there we go, and it even uh, puts the text at the right size, which is very nice, very nice indeed. Anyways, you will also notice that I've got stock here. It's using an unaltered version of this, with the icons just set to their basic state. I need to make this wave and spread, but this is what happens when you set your current preset to null. The game has a lot of ways of handling this, namely spawning in a preset with no extra modifiers and just with the name stock. Uh, the terminology is from TF2, and I know there's a bunch of you TF2 chads in the audience who know exactly what I mean when I talk about the stock loadout. So it's basically just the default. And having a permanent way to access the default loadout in Sunny is going to be a huge boon to anyone who is doing a lot of loadout switching, which will be a bigger part of version 1.1 and version 1.2. Other than that, there's a few ways that this version differs technically from like uh, Burbat 1.0. So if I just control shift Come on. There we go. So, this used to be pre-built into, like, this, <laughs> the thing. But now they're spawned in, and then they're given, like, button stuff. However, as you can see, sort of broken. Yeah, it's, it's broken. I've tried to, like, fix it up and make it a lot better, but it's, it's just misbehaving. Speaking of misbehaving, um, save conversions not working 100%, but otherwise, you'll notice that this says Legacy A through Legacy J. So the presets do convert over from 1.0, which is why I recommend jumping in on the demo and having a geezer that, because that'd be interesting. And there's also a number of errors as well, which is always cool to see. Yeah, I don't know why, because uh, I know that navigation can work sometimes, just stops the feather from spinning. Yep, no, still not working. Yeah, I've used uh, print statements and stuff to check what's actually going on under under the hood. It's it's not giving me much to work with, honestly. Um, tried a lot, a lot of different stuff, but at least cursor navigation works. Um, controller navigation and keyboard navigation that's busted, which is why I need to fix that. And even if I save and close, go back to my loadout, there we go, it sometimes fixes itself, but only up to like, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth slot. For some reason, it just ignores the seventh, and then it's like, this one, you can navigate to, but you can't navigate off it, because right here, there's no <laughs> selectables. It's really infuriating when stuff, like when basic stuff like this breaks completely. Anyways, oh, take two went much better this time. I actually 
uh, got my thoughts out with minimal ums and ahs this time. Anyways, yeah, I am actually getting better, which is why hopefully uh, some of you guys have subscribed, because I'm actually looking to, you know, self-improve at this sort of stuff, and going off script and uh, training my voice to not... Uh, see, there, there, there I go again with me having stupid pauses. Uh, I shouldn't be paying attention to it. Anyways, I am actually trying to improve at uh, off-the-cuff speaking, just scriptless. As you can see, lots of errors. Um, I don't even know what this is. This is because like users are within burb save. It's 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 a bit of a mess right now. But uh, the big new features are you'll be able to just like constantly, constantly go. Let's just let's just spam. Let's just do you know what? Live stress test. Whatever. Spam the keyboard. Let's go. Let's see. Is it in small mode? Yes, there we go. There is actually... Wow. Yep, small mode's broken as well. That's interesting. I need to make that happen earlier, and I need to make it... I might make it at, like, three different scales, which will be interesting. Other than that... Yep, broken. Still broken. Very, very broken. But otherwise... Can I actually select these buttons? It's very, very precise. Feels off. But yeah, with this small mode, I'll have to, you know, take like at least three to four more days to like really iron out the kinks in this one. Because otherwise, it will be like real bad on launch. So yeah, that's mainly the hurdles I have to jump over. There's two other things I want to do. I want to make like a defined edit screen for presets, just so you can see a lot of the extra data actually. Speaking of extra data, I'll open up the item list and show you, like, how the class is constructed. This isn't it. Oh, okay, okay, yep, don't, don't you dare. There we go. Yep, I'm sort of, I sort of wanted to focus on this. Alright, so, let's say you open up the loadout slate, right? And it spawns in your buttons, but you'll want to see, I actually have, uh, access to these tools here. Ta-da! This, this is everything um, about items, and this is also on presets as well, so let's open this up. There we go, and contained items, wave wave spread, there you go. So all of this now has a lot of this boilerplate code, so a name, file ID, and stuff like that. I've shown this off like on live on my Discord server, but I've never shown what it looks like in the editor. Other than that, it looks pretty good. You can see how it's putting in the um, hat instead of nulls, which is interesting. That was a conversion error over from Legacy. You can see in the junk ones I made. Contained items. There we go. Nothing. And it's null. This is, this is how it defaults when it handles null. And it needs to handle that sort of stuff because otherwise... Uh, it won't have a good way of defining when you don't have presets in. So small mode, stock, new loadout creation. Um, the revert screen is coming down the pipeline, and edit screen is coming down the pipeline. I might make a TF2 style backpack screen later on, but that'll probably be version 1.2. But this is shaping up to be a very nice improvement. I'll have to make these buttons bigger and like give the buttons more space. So next to the supply changes, There'll be a revert button with a list of changes you've made, and it will basically just tell you, oh, do you want to revert X amount of changes? You've added this loadout, you've changed this item, you've removed this loadout, and you'll be able to delete and shuffle around the order of loadouts and change the names, and a bunch of other really cool, high-quality customization stuff. Again, this is because in versions 1.1, and especially 1.2 coming down the pipeline, uh... You'll be able to better, like, access presets from in-game. Like, on respawn, there'll probably be, like, a grace period where you can select stuff a bit easier. Anyways, uh, now that we're at the end of the video, I have to do the standard call to action. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and sub. I'm getting better at off-the-cuff speaking just without a script. So, I'd be happy if you guys could come along and just watch me improve at this and improve my game as well. This game is also out on Steam, um, if you want to support it and also play the demo before I go and overwrite the old loadout system. 
it'll, you'll have access to version 1.0.3, both the demo and full version, if you pay about 12 bucks 50, which is, you know, pretty good considering how many levels are in this game. If you want to jump on my Discord, we actually have a pretty amazing community there. Um, everyone there is doing pretty well, and I'm also trying to get to 100 members by, like, the middle of this year. We're very small, we're a very small community, so... Uh, link to that is in the top of the description, along with the link to the game itself. Uh, version 1.0.3, remember, is live. And that's doing uh, pretty well for itself. Again, uh, this obviously is going to be better off for the game, so... I hope that you guys will uh, are excited for what's coming down the pipeline because I'm constantly improving the game even after launch. Anyways, as always, thank you all for watching and take care.